Welcome back to the Crypto Gorilla YouTube channel. It's the end of the week where we cover the biggest news stories surrounding brands and VCs entering the space. If you enjoy this kind of content, would you kindly hit that subscribe button as I drop news videos every single Friday and market update videos every single Tuesday. Now, the biggest news story in the world of NFTs was NFTs launching on Bitcoin using the Ordinals protocol, which is entirely on chain. Now, while this did upset many Bitcoin maxis who took to Twitter to express their opinion, some collections have been getting support by notable people on Twitter such as Tropo Farmer, Vopa, and Dingaling, the latter of which purchased seven NFTs from the Ordinals Punks collection for a whopping 15.2 Bitcoin, which at the time was roughly $340,000 before crypto started to dump. Now, if you are shopping for Bitcoin NFTs, do keep in mind that there are no official tools. There is no audited wallet. There is no marketplace. All the trades are currently happening on Discord in DMs or through chats, using spreadsheets and doing over-the-counter deals, which can lead to a ton of scams. Next up, we have Reddit partnering with the NFL to launch their Super Bowl avatars. Now, although Reddit has been selling digital collectibles from anywhere from $10 to $100 on their platform, which have done incredibly well on the secondary market, these avatars are entirely free to claim simply by logging into Reddit. In celebrity news, Rihanna sold a portion of her royalties to her hit song, Ish Better Have My Money, in the form of an NFT. The collection of 300 NFTs sold for 0.128 Ethereum each and grants every NFT holder a 0.0033% right to streaming royalties from their master recording. Now, the mint took place on the Another Block platform, which as you can see here, estimates a 6.5% yearly return based on the current stream numbers, which roughly translates to $13.65 a year, which means it will take a total of 15 years just to recuperate your money. Continuing in celebrity news, Zblocks is launching a fully on-chain generative Marilyn Monroe NFT collection. The drop will be happening sometime in Q1 and they will be selling a mint pass through OpenSea. Now, if you want to try to get whitelist for this, it is through application on their website. I'm going to put a link for that in the description down below. Next up, we had a ton of bearish news for crypto, the first of which is the Super Bowl banning crypto related commercials. Now, despite having multiple commercials booked for this year already and seeing many brands have commercials during the past two Super Bowls, such as FTX, Crypto.com and Coinbase, who had that weird QR code that would bounce around the screen that actually performed incredibly well. They said they had over 20 million hits on their landing page within one minute, and they went from 26th place in the app store to second place. Now, despite the ban, Gabriel did turn to Twitter to say the Digidaigaku Dragons commercial will still be airing. The next bit of FUD, we saw Binance temporarily suspend all US dollar bank transfers. Now, please note that I did say temporary. As you can see in this tweet, they do mention that they are working as fast as possible to get this back online. And this does only apply to Binance and not Binance US, in which case only 0.01% of their monthly users actually engage in US dollar bank transfers. Now, the biggest bit of FUD that we had this week was the rumor that surfaced that the SEC is potentially looking to ban crypto staking for retail investors. Now, if this is true, it would be a horrible move for the US in my opinion. Of course, in the short term, it would be a bad move for crypto as we would see negative price movement on all cryptos across the board. However, in the long term, this would be a horrible move for America because whether or not they do this, crypto is going to move on and thrive without them. Now, this story was leaked by the co-founder and CEO of Coinbase, who released a thread on his personal Twitter, as well as a thread on the Coinbase Twitter, which dove deeper into the benefits of staking, as well as the direct negative impact that this would have on America. However, rumors did get worse on Thursday when news came out that Kraken, a popular crypto exchange, will be forced to pay a $30 million fine to the SEC for their staking as a service. For the time being, it does seem that the SEC's issue was with the service itself and not staking crypto as a whole. Now, despite all the FUD stories, there is still plenty of money rolling into Web3. While we cannot cover all the fundraisers that took place, as you can see from this list, there have been a ton. We're gonna take a look at some of the largest as well as some of the most notable, in my opinion. The first of which is Mino Games, who have just announced a $15 million raise to build Dimension 
Cardinals their first Web3 game. Now, this round was led by Standard Crypto, who have invested in companies such as Limit Break, Yuga Labs, OpenSea, and a ton more. Their low supply, free mint, is highly anticipated, and both the founder and project itself have seen hyper growth in their social media numbers. I always find this interesting to follow, so we're just gonna jump on Social Blade real quick. And if we look at Sash, the founder's page, you can see he went from 12,000 followers to 190,000 followers in the span of a few weeks. Very similar to the Dimensionals Twitter, which has done the exact same growth pattern. Now, this is a pattern we have been seeing with free NFTs. We saw Igor grow all the way to 370,000 followers, as well as Gabriel, who started this whole hyper growth trend, growing to above 780,000 followers on Twitter. This just goes to show you the brand power of giving away free NFTs. In the eyes of Web2, these numbers are insane, and reaching these numbers would normally cost you a ton in marketing dollars. The next raise was from Cube, as they have raised $6.5 million for their platform that enables brands to create a loyalty program, which rewards users with a token for completing tasks such as posting a tweet on Twitter or posting a video on platforms like TikTok. Now, in my opinion, loyalty programs on the blockchain that use tokens to reward their customers are a no-brainer, and it will become more and more commonplace to see this as all companies begin to embrace this technology. Next up, we have CoinCover raising $30 million to help users and companies protect their digital assets from hacks and human error. Now, some of the products they offer are threat protection by monitoring transactions, as well as disaster recovery with a non-custodial backup and recovery for private keys. Finally, we have Carbon Place raising $45 million for a global marketplace for carbon credits coming in early 2023. Now, they will be using blockchain technology and the credits will be stored in a wallet, which will allow users to manage their credits and transact in real time. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to my channel, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. Thank you for watching you Crypto Gorilla. Peace.